I feel betrayed by my government. People hit by flooding say they need help now. What local leaders are doing. It's terrifying. The buildings filled up with water in a matter of minutes. Businesses are scrambling to reopen as they recover from the storm. The community out, man, we gotta stick together, you know? How neighbors are coming together and how you can help. It's 6 a.m. on Thursday, January 25th, and you're up with CBS 8. We begin with breaking news out of the Del Mar area. We are just now learning that this crash on the five has turned deadly. The driver of a Toyota Tundra slammed into the back of a commercial truck hauling a trailer. That trailer sliced off the top of, of the Tundra there. Half of it is underneath the truck. Nice. Happened just after four this morning in the southbound lanes of the five near the Del Mar Heights exit. It's not clear what led to the crash, but again, we do know at least one person is dead. A SIG alert has been issued, so you can expect traffic in the area um, as we start to head into the thick of our morning commute. Right, glad you're with us here at 6 a.m. on this Thursday. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Anna Laurel in for Ned at Arampur. Let's get right to Evan Narani, mm -hmm. who's been watching this traffic for us on the 5 southbound. Yeah, Evan. so I mean, lucky for us, the 5 a.m. morning commute is not as busy as what we see at 6 a.m. 6 a.m. now volume starting to pick up out there on the roads, and that means that we're going to start to see some pretty decent backups in the area. Uh, the CHP has also been able to push this over to the right hand shoulder, and that uh, has encouraged the flow of traffic in the area. Uh, I'm looking at one of our cameras there still shows that there's some slowing of speeds, and that's probably what we'll pick up on over the coming hours. Here's what we see in that area. Five and six lane blocked with that crash on the five southbound at Del Mar Heights Road. We'll check in on this again soon. Uh, here's the view on satellite radar right now. A cloudy start to the morning, very gray out there. We've got a couple showers that are going to pop up in the next several hours. Not all that impactful, very light for the most part, but worth mentioning that we could see a couple showers in the mix. And then as we get through the next several days, we're going to watch as those conditions dry out quite a bit. Next notable opportunity for rain not coming until Thursday of next week, a full week out from today. Back to you. I feel betrayed by my government. I work, I pay taxes. I never ask for anything. And when I ask right now, call FEMA, call the country San Diego, they say this is not a disaster. Right now, many people affected by flooding damage after Monday's storm say the local government needs to do more to help them. We checked in with people living along Hamisha Road. Some families there are still working to get water out of their homes from Monday. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria says he just talked with Vice President Kamala Harris and asked for her assistance in getting help from FEMA. In a post on X, he says the VP expressed her concern for our communities and desire to help us rebuild. So far, the county says over 1,000 people have filled out a damage survey. That will help determine what state and federal assistance that we get. For now, the county just ratified a countywide local emergency proclamation. That means they can try to get more funding and to get more resources. Right now, some flood victims who live on Beta Street and hard hit Southcrest are considering legal action against the city. This is Greg Montoya. He's among a group of neighbors who sued the city over flooding in 2019. Well, they eventually settled, but now Montoya says he reached out to the city multiple times since then to clear the storm channel near his home. And now that his house is flooded again, he's looking for an attorney to file a lawsuit. If they would have followed up with all the emails that I send them about cleaning the storm drains, cleaning the channel, if they would have followed up with, with that, like I asked them to do, that we wouldn't be in this situation. Now, a city spokesperson told us this area is a floodplain and reiterated that no amount of preparation could have prevented the damage from this particular rain event. They say the city has secured more than $700,000 in federal funding to help address flood condition in the Choyas Creek area. And some of the flood victims in San Diego's hardest hit by Monday's storm feel they're being overlooked. CBS 8's Richard Allen has more on how they are supporting each other as they wait for assistance from elected leaders. Everything got floating all the way to our, our dinner, dinner table. Martin Aguilar's home was completely wiped out by Monday's flood. From the televisions, to the piano, to the bathroom, to the recently purchased RV outback. We don't got no place to live. We, uh, we don't got no cover. We only got our floating uh, on us. We don't got a, 
Nothing. And nothing so far from any government officials. The city has no show up. Nobody has come to talk to us. We right now in the cold is cold. Meanwhile, neighbors along the street are showing up for each other, handing out food and water along the sidewalk, and even driving through the neighborhood to deliver pizza for these families who have nothing else to eat. We gotta help the community out, man. We gotta stick together, you know? It's the people in the community that are helping out. Um, Water. But not, not, no, no one's come out and helped us at all. And just a short distance away, nearly everything inside Ashley Pacheco's parents' home on Beta Street was also destroyed. We lost everything, furniture, sofa, uh, fridge, stove, everything, letters, pictures, all the memories. Thankfully, their dogs were rescued, as was her elderly grandmother across the street. Nobody anticipated the severity of this storm. Tuesday, Mayor Todd Gloria emphasized that the city is focused on helping residents and businesses recover from this devastation. Help that these residents say can't arrive soon enough. In the meantime, Ashley Pacheco plans to help her neighbors to report their damage, something the city is encouraging. I think if we enough of us report, we can get our voices heard. Richard Allen, CBS 8. Oh, tough to see all that damage, yeah, right? Is. The cleanup is underway here and it will be for quite some time. Right now, volunteers are spread out across our county conducting a census of our unsheltered population. Yeah, it's the annual point in time count and it basically gives us a glimpse of how many people are homeless in San Diego. CBS 8's Regina Urita is following city leaders and volunteers. She joins us live from North Park. Regina, Thanks so far much. this morning you've spoken with the mayor, you've spoken with council member Whitburn. What's happening out there? Yeah. Good morning, guys, and uh, definitely just an important day this morning when it comes to the point in time count. So we actually have been encountering uh, several people experiencing homelessness, talking to them. Uh, we've been following the group with Mayor Todd Gloria as well as, as uh, Council Member Stephen Whitburn. But I want to bring in Mayor Todd Gloria because uh, when we talk about the point in time count, just to give some perspective, uh, we did see a 14 percent increase from the previous year uh, when we're talking about last year. So over 10,000 people experiencing homelessness. But I really want to talk in terms of this year, right? We do have a, uh, a camping ban this year. So where are we looking uh, in terms of that uh, point in time count? Where are we looking in terms of the numbers? Would that affect it? Uh, what are we looking at? Well, we know at least from our monthly count, this is the annual count we're performing today, but we do a monthly count in downtown, and what we've seen from the unsafe camping ordinance is a dramatic reduction in the number of tents on the streets of downtown San Diego. We've also seen a lot of traction in Balboa Park, where a reduction of encampments there as people move into our safe sleeping sites. So uh, this undoubtedly has affected uh, the distribution of the population, and we'll find out, right? The point in time count will yield some results later this spring, and we'll look at those very closely. We're also, you know, we were just talking a, a couple sec, a couple minutes ago, just talking about, um, you know, some of the areas that many people experiencing homelessness used to camp at uh, before the uh, camping ban, right? We're talking downtown. Yeah. Have you kind of seen uh, just sort of a migration towards other areas, maybe riverbeds uh, mm -hmm. along the highways? We've, we've been walking towards uh, those areas along the freeway on the 805. Have we kind of just seen that migration? What have you looked at? That migration has been going on for years, and in fact, the city has had a contract with an outfit called CityNet, which does outreach with Caltrans along our highways. So this has been a present problem in our community for quite some time. Um, but what we have seen is an evolution of folks that are taking uh, advantage of the sheltering and safe sleeping and safe parking sites that we've provided. Reminder that in the last three years, we've been able to double the number of shelter beds, safe sleeping sites, and safe parking lots. And so when we see a shift of folks, maybe sometimes they move to another community or another block, but hundreds, if not thousands of them are moving into our O-Lot safe sleeping site, to our 24-hour safe parking lot in Mission Valley, or to our women's shelter that we just opened yesterday. Uh, we are trying to provide more uh, opportunities for people to get off the streets because it's not compassionate to leave people on the sidewalk. All right. Well, Mayor Todd Gloria, thank you so much. Of course, as I mentioned, uh, this morning we've been following his group as well as Councilmember Stephen Whitburn just talking about uh, really just some of the efforts in terms of mitigating the homelessness crisis here in San Diego. But we're going to keep you guys updated as far as those numbers go for that point in time count. It will be very interesting to see where we're at this year. That's latest here in North Park. I'm Regina Urita. I'll send this back to you guys.
It's great to see them out there, the mayor, yeah. council members, to see what it's like at 5 in the morning mm -hmm. in San Diego, yep. the people that are sleeping out on the streets. It's a real accurate depiction of what people are going through. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, those counts are vital to be able to figure out how to address the yeah, issue. And for so, funding yeah. and yep. our efforts and where yeah. we, how far we've gone or exactly. what we've got left to do. Yeah, uh, not just we, on paper. We know that uh, this bout of dry weather is a good thing for everyone, whether it be those on the streets or those who are now trying to pick up the pieces left behind of the damage around their homes, around their cars, uh, with the rain that we saw on Monday. Uh, we expect that today is going to bring us the possibility of a few very, very mellow scattered showers, all non impactful. So accumulation totals have appeared to be right around a few hundredths of an inch, one one hundredth two one hundredths of an inch. Uh, so very light overall. By the time we get to Friday and then all the way through Tuesday, winds are going to shift offshore. Better opportunity for daily sunshine to come into play and for those temperatures to warm up nicely. And then you already start to see it here. Wednesday to Thursday, we're going to watch as our next opportunity for rain starts to move in. So that's a full week out from today. Still just a little far out for us to be able to focus much on it. Uh, five day forecast shows that temperatures are going to warm really significantly. I mean, we've got a 15 degree climb from today at 62 degrees all the way up to 78 by Sunday. And again, don't be too weirded out by this shower symbol that you see for today. Those showers are going to be very few and far between and very light, but still want to give you the emphasis that they have a possibility of taking place. By the time we get to Monday of next week, temperatures will start a little bit of a cool down, but still staying in the mid 70s out there comfortable. Live look outside shows there's a little bit of fog, a little bit of gray that we'll be working through, especially through sunrise at 648. So another half hour, about 35 minutes or so before we'll see that sunrise. Sunset coming at 514 PM. Longer days are ahead. And then if you walk out the door right now, you're at 55 degrees for Carlsbad, Encinitas, Del Mar. 57 right now in San Diego, 54 in El Cajon. Since this storm came through, we've had pretty considerable cloud cover each day, and that's kept our temperatures overnight a little more in that mild zone. Uh, let's check in on traffic, see how your roads are. We were talking earlier about this crash that took place in the Del Mar area. We're starting to see a little bit of congestion now that that morning commute is really picking up. Right now, we're being told only the number five and number six lanes are blocked. So that could be a good reason why volume is still flowing through is because lanes one through four are still open. But that Sigler is in play and we'll let you know if we start to see any more dramatic backups in the area. Besides that, it's a pretty smooth start to the morning. Let's check in on border wait times. 95 minute wait at the San Ysidro port of entry. Otay Mesa port of entry is going to take you about 75 minutes to get across. Back to you. It was just the, the perfect storm, I guess you could say. The perfect storm still ahead. Businesses lost merchandise and are still cleaning up and repairing damage from flooding. We check in as they try to recover. And the storm that devastated San Diego is now hitting the south. Why experts say we'll see this severe weather more often.